Bob Marley's One Love is a biopic film that follows the story of Bob Marley as he moves through his life and becomes the star we know him to be. But the film about Bob Marley's life story wasn't really a depiction of his life as it was. Things were cut, not fully explored, changed, and messed with all for the sake of drama. Well, I have the truth of it all right here for you. Here are some things you missed from the Bob Marley biopic. The truth about Bob Marley's life. Remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more Black Hollywood insider stories like this one. I keep the rest of the truth of Black Hollywood waiting for you. Bob Marley's father, Norval, died when Bob was 10 years old. The film does not cover this event at length or go into depth about his father. His father died of a heart attack in 1955. His father wasn't very present in Bob's early life. He preferred to work to provide for his family rather than to spend time with them. For this reason, Bob was mostly raised by his mother, Sidella Malcolm. Norval Marley was a British naval captain from Essex. This is why he couldn't be around very much in Bob's early childhood. As part of his work, he was meant to oversee the estate workers in Jamaica. He used to work to serve his country in India and found himself working for the British Colonial Service in Jamaica. There, he had many affairs with various women. Sidella was 18 years old when she met Bob Marley's father and became pregnant with his child. They never married. After the death of Bob's father, his mother was left in poverty to fend for herself, so she moved to Kingston in Jamaica to make a way for herself and her young son. In 1977, Bob Marley was arrested with his friend Stone Barrett. This was for his possession of cannabis, which is illegal to carry and use for recreational purposes in London. The film doesn't really explain why he was arrested and what happened. He was fined 50 pounds for possession and then released. This is the only time he was arrested for charges of this nature. Bob believed that cannabis should be legal to use how you wish and that possession should not be criminalized. Cannabis is a pretty big part of Jamaican culture. It's especially important to those who follow the Rastafarian faith. These people believe that weed is a part of their spiritual journey toward enlightenment and assists with getting into a meditative state. Bob was one such person that this faith appealed to and from a young age he would engage accordingly. He became a Rastafarian in 1966. Part of this religion is to follow a strictly vegetarian diet. As a result, Bob was a vegetarian himself and likely used cannabis every day. Massop was one of the people who warned Bob Marley that there would be a planned assassination of him. After this, Bob flew them out to discuss how he would be performing at the One Love Peace concert. They made plans, and the pair organized Bob's performance on his behalf. Masop was a gang leader, and at the time of Bob's attempted assassination, he was being held in a detention center. This is how Bob knew that Masop wasn't one of the people who were planning to have him assassinated. There was no way that Masop could have been one of the perpetrators. What one love does not tell is that Masop passed away just two years after that organizing meeting. Claude Masop passed away on February 4, 1979, at 29 years old. He was in Kingston, Jamaica, when he was shot by the police during a car chase when leaving a football match in Spanish town. He was being targeted for his connections with drug trafficking, gang leading, and possession of illegal substances. Marshall passed away later, and it is suspected that he was attacked by people who were his enemies or as a result of an organized assassination. The attempted assassination of Bob Marley may not be common knowledge to most audiences and even people who consider themselves fans of his music. But don't worry, nobody was fatally harmed. Bob, his wife, and his manager were shot. On December 3rd of 1976, Bob Marley and his band were rehearsing Who Shot the Sheriff? in his home when seven armed men jumped out of a car and fired shots at all of them. This all happened two days before Bob Marley was supposed to do a performance in Kingston, Jamaica. 
Rita experienced the most potentially fatal bullet wound when she was shot in the head and somehow managed to survive. The bullet was rumored to have been nearly an inch away from her head. The only reason she survived is because of her hair. Yes, the locks were so thick that they reduced the impact of the bullet and it was not able to penetrate all the way to her skull. Bob had been shot once in his left arm and another in his chest. His manager was shot in the leg and upper thigh. Although there isn't any official trail of evidence for these claims, people believe that the leader of the Jamaican Labor Party ordered his bodyguard to be present during the shooting. This was possibly to put an end to the upcoming concert, which would feature songs by Bob Marley and other reggae artists with more politically progressive views. The CIA was also rumored to be involved in the organized attempt to assassinate Bob and his family. As mentioned previously, Don was Bob's manager and was present, and also harmed during the assassination attempt. Remember the song Bad Card with the lyrics, Oh man, you just playing a game and then you draw a bad card? Well, that song was based on Bob Marley's altercation with his own manager. When you watch the biopic, you probably came out of it thinking that it was a short conflict and they made up afterward. In reality, this could not be farther from the truth. The altercations were long and violent. A band member reported that Bob Marley nearly pushed his manager out of the window. It lasted nearly three hours. They did not become friends afterward or forgive one another. Bob was infuriated and continued to dog on Don Taylor. In fact, the only reason that Don Taylor terminated the contract he had with Bob was because Bob Marley held him at gunpoint and forced him to. Did you notice Peter Tosh in the film? No. Of course you didn't. His part was cut. Peter Tosh was meant to be played by Alex again. He was cast and acted in multiple scenes for the film and was even part of some of the promo. However, they decided to cut him out of the film in the end. This disappointed a lot of Bob Marley fans who wanted to see another one of their favorite reggae legends portrayed on the big screen. Alex said that he appreciated the chance to do the work and did not feel sour about the fact that he was axed. This was so important to people that he had to make a three-minute Instagram video addressing the situation and urging viewers to watch the film despite his absence. The director reassured him that his acting performance was not the reason he was cut from the film. Peter Tosh was one of the members of a reggae band with Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler. The band was called Whalers. Peter Tosh was a reggae legend of his own. He released beloved songs like I Am That I Am and Johnny B. Good. It's too bad he didn't make it onto the film. The film may have tried to portray the star in a sympathetic light for other matters, but they decided to put it all on him for this one. In the film, we see him go to the doctor for a toe injury. He is told that he has melanoma, and then this matter is never addressed again. Maybe this was not intentional, but it made it seem like Bob ignored his condition and just didn't care how it affected him. This is a particularly sneaky smear on Bob's character as someone careless and not concerned with their own health. Over here in the real world, we know that Bob Marlett returned to the doctor and had the toe injury treated. However, the toe injury turned out to be something much worse, and this was only discovered much later. Although they believed the toe injury to be harmless, it turned out to be skin cancer that had already spread all throughout his body. The part where Bob did go wrong was when he dismissed conventional medicine and instead chose to travel to Germany where he got a non-medical treatment for his cancer. That treatment didn't quite work out as he'd hoped and he passed away in 1981. After the passing of Bob's father, his mother began a relationship with a man named Thaddeus Livingston. Later, she had a child with him named Pearl. This was Bob's stepdad and stepsister. They were never depicted in the film and never really spoken about. It appears the writers don't believe that these events had a significant effect on the major themes of Bob Marley's life story. The film does allude to the idea that Bob Marley was unfaithful to his wife, Rita. However, we don't get all of it. Bob Marley was a serial adulterer. 
and is reported to have nine children in total. Six of them were from other relationships he had during his marriage, and three were from his marriage with Rita. His other two adopted children were from Rita's previous marriage. In the film, it is referred to, but we never see the full scope of the effect and consequences that his infidelity has on his relationship with Rita. A lot of people missed what the meaning of the ending of the film was supposed to be. The director and some film critics decided to lend a helping hand. The last few images we see in the film are of Bob Marley realizing that his injury was not going to heal. He also experiences visions telling him that he needs to come home and that he has reached his time. While these images pass through our minds, we are presented with scenes of politicians shaking hands as Bob Marley's concert was an attempt to unite the opposing sides. This was supposed to allude to Bob's goals in his life and through his music and how he felt that he was being told that his time was up. He was away from his own home country for many years at this point and had distanced himself from his own culture. With the idea that he might die in his mind, he begins to regret this and longs to be back. Click on this video about another Black Hollywood topic you're not caught up on. Did you notice any of these missing and changed parts as well?